Let's go on now. There's that... Samson... Before he married this woman, he gave a riddle to her people. Is that right? His riddle went like this. Out of the eater, E-A-T-E-R, eater, one who eats, out of the eater come forth meat, and out of the strong come forth sweetness. Now let us, let us think on this riddle. This was, the, I think, the first riddle that he gave us. He gave another riddle. We're going to get to that. Out of the eater, the one who consumes food, comes meat. That it is, that is a riddle. That is a riddle, I'm telling you. <laughs> the knowledge is, is so disordered, ordered, it's so uh, taken out of proper arrangement that, you, that, that it really baffles. It, 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 it befuddles you. It, it, it just uh, throws the, 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 the probe out, out. You know, you can't approach it. It defeats the approach, the approach to get some understanding out of it. Out of the eater comes meat. We think of people that put meat in their mouth to eat. Out of the eater comes meat. Yes, out of the cow who eats the grain comes not only milk, but meat. And what does the New Testament say? It says the milk is for those who are babies, who are babies. The meat is for those who grown up in the knowledge. Isn't that Paul speaking in the New Testament? Oh, yeah. So he said, out of the eater comes meat. Not only milk, this cow that's eating up everything, it don't produce only milk, produce meat too. And he says, out of the strong comes sweetness. What was he telling them? He was giving them a, a blueprint, a scheme for a rule, for mighty rule. Let's go on now. When he explained the riddle to them, and I believe he did explain the riddle, you Bible students, in fact, you know better than me on this. I don't know if the Bible says he explained the riddle or not, but I do know it was explained to them. When he explained the riddle to them, they readily consented to give him what he wanted. Now, what did he want in exchange? If they were not able to break his riddle, and he had to give it to them, he wanted something in exchange. What he wanted was thirty sheep and thirty garments. He wanted the same thing that he promised them if they were able to break his riddle. Is that right? Yes, some of you are not familiar with it, but he promised, his, his, his promise to them was that he would give them 30 sheets and 30 changes of garments, 30 fresh changes, new changes of garments, if they were able to break it. And he said if they were not able to do it, they should give him the same. This was a bargain for their society. He was bargaining with them for their society. Say, now I'm going to give you a secret knowledge, a secret scheme. But if you accept it, then you give me your society. My scheme is going to give you 30 sheets and 30 new changes of garments. 
Now, I want you to give it to me the same, meaning that we are going to be equal partners in this. Actually, I'm giving you nothing. Listen, you're going to have it, but it's going to be mine. That's what he's saying. You're going to have it, but it's going to be mine. Now, I hope a whole lot of people get this tape. Because it's talking about what's happening right here on earth today. Dear people, listen very carefully at this riddle. He promised them 30 changes of garments, new changes of garments, and 30 sheep. And he said, if I, if you can't break my riddle, you give me the same. This is what that means. It means that he gave them a special knowledge. They didn't know that that special knowledge was symbolic, that it had a riddle to it. The language doesn't tell you this, what I'm saying now, but this is the, this is the truth. They didn't know that it had a riddle to it, that it had to be interpreted farther than what it was interpreted to them by the giver. And what he's saying is that you, you will get it, but I am going to be the possessor of it. Because I know the answers, you don't. I'm going to give it to you, but you're not going to know the answers. I know the answers. So you're going to have, because of me, 30 fresh changes of garments and 30 sheep. But they're going to belong to me because I know the riddle and you don't. What is this saying, dear people? It's saying that a crooked movement in Israel gave Europe the Western order of society, gave them Christian society, but did not give them the riddle, the secret knowledge in the Christian doctrine. Through that Christian the, the secret knowledge in the Christian doctrine, they manipulate the behavior, the mind, the whole makeup of Western society. And whatever Western society gets belongs to that secret minority, that hidden bunch of conspirators. Now, what I'm telling you is not from the protocols of Zion. This is from the understanding that God has blessed me with. And I stand on it with my life. I know it to be a fact. This is no guesswork about a conspiracy. This is a fact about a conspiracy. Now, let us continue. I hope we're still on the telephone hookup. The operator should hear this. What is 30 sheep? What do you call these pages of this? You call it also sheep. 30 sheep means a written book, book material. What is garment? Garment is the use of that knowledge in the book. We wear the knowledge. We use the knowledge. We protect ourselves with the knowledge of the book. So the sheep means the knowledge, the garments that he would give them is the equal number of the sheep, meaning that they will get the knowledge of how to wear that knowledge. He will give them the knowledge and then tell them how to wear it how to use it for their protection. All right? Let's continue now. Out of the eater come forth meat. So he told them that there is more than moral in religion. There is more than milk in religion. There is high science in religion. You can't get it out. I know how to get it out. If you will accept for me to give it to you, I'll give you a kingdom that will last. I will give you a, an, an eternal tree. I will give you eternal life. You will become as the gods, 
knowing both good and evil. But I am going to interpret this for you. <laughs> so you will have weaker knowledge than what I'm going to keep for myself. What I'm going to give you is going to be something to contain you too. <laughs> it's, it's, it's pitiful, but it's funny too. How the whole European world was tricked, given an ideology that was designed to keep them in the slave grip of the hidden conspirators of Judaism while at the same time giving them secret knowledge that will enable them, the Gentiles, to hold us in slave grip of a weaker knowledge. So the Pope's milk is richer than our milk. He drinks a richer milk than our milk. Nevertheless, he drinks milk. The Pope's milk, the Pope, pardon me, meat is processed like our meat, but only his is aged a little longer, so it costs more. <laughs> what does this 30 represent now? 30 represents a complete phase. In other words, he told them, I'm going to give you a reign, a government, a rule. I'm going to give you a rule for a duration. But they don't understand it. What kind of rule is going to be? Sheep and changes of garment. Why have to have all these changes of garment? A change for each sheep. It's because that your rule shall be deceitful. It shall be crooked. It shall give different dress for different people. Some will wear a small dress. Some will wear a, 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 a crooked, a, a, a murderous dress. Some will represent religion, some will represent dry logic. I'm going to give you a dress of many changes, 30 changes. One for every period. Whenever a change comes, a new day comes, a new sun, every morning a sun rises up. Whenever a new sun rises up, you're going to have a new garment. One for each day. Sun will go down on you, but I'll show you how to have eternal life. You step out of one dress right into another. Next morning, the one that they condemn won't be the one they see you in. I'm going to show you how to have eternal life. Yes. So they stand up today in the name of white supremacy. Stand up next month or next year or ten years later in the name of democracy. Long time ago it was in the name of Christ. Later on it's in the name of Karl Marx. Yes. Now it's in the name of Dr. Martin Luther King. In the name of Hitler. Yes. Don't you know the church supported Hitler? I'm not talking about the American church. But church people, church leadership supported Hitler. Yes. So we're going to give you a garment of 30 changes. 30 is the number of days of the month. And it also is the time that it takes the moon to go through complete phase. Moon represents...
represents your social life, spiritual, social life. The moment you become spiritually hip to something, here comes a new, a new moon. <laughs> but only thing, this is not a new moon, this is a new sun. The time that it takes the moon to make, to go through its phases, you get approximately 30 suns. Is that right? 30 suns. 30 bodies or 30 concepts of knowledge. Every time they catch you in one and light go out on that one, I'll show you how to bring a new knowledge, a new concept. And you'll come out in a different dress and they'll accept you. This is the kingdom of the devil. This is Satan giving the Western world the kingdom of the devil. But actually, he's not giving them anything because through his hidden tricks and knowledge, he is really the possessor of it. Let's continue now. 30 sheets, 30 changes. Another time we see Samson in his great role, he has the jawbone of an ass in his hand. And he's battling the army of the Philistines with the jawbone of the ass. All the meat is off the jawbone. Nothing but the bone. Now you understand that meat is higher knowledge. So with no higher knowledge, just lip power. And tell me, don't these dumb preachers have a whole lot of jaw power? Oh, God said it! <laughs> I heard myself in a vision, and I came out to preach the gospel of the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> they got some powerful jawbones with no meat of knowledge. And they're dumb asses. And leave that on the wire, it's not as hot as it sounds. Yes, they're the dumb asses. Now you see how come there, there was a jawbone of ass. The donkey is called a stupid animal. Stubborn, stubborn as he can be. The leadership in the church, aren't they stubborn? You can come to them with all kind of clear arguments. Oh, they don't want to move a jot. Oh, not going here. You're wrong. How do you get that hard? Whose interpretation is that? Won't budge, not a jot. Just like stubborn donkeys. But look, there is a Samson, a knowledge, a knowledge body that has gone off from the original knowledge body. There is a Judaism that has gone off from the original Judaism. And it is now feeding, it is now leading this jawbone war. So the stupid preachers are really acting in accord with the trick in the knowledge. They are serving the purpose of the real, the purpose of the secret knowledge. And they are here stubbornly resisting the light of truth. But look how mighty that body, mighty of body of knowledge was using those dumb preachers. He just slew the army of the Philistines. Beat them down mercifully. Mercilessly, pardon me. Yes, why? Because they had knowledge that the Philistines didn't have. And even though the knowledge was in real form, and could be used by dumb preachers, it was so loaded with invisible arrows that bowed into the mind, bowed into the human sentiment, that you defeat an army with something that really ain't nothing but stupidity. And when you look closely at the so-called Trinitarian doctrine, 
in the way that they give it to the common people is stupidity. It's nothing but stupidity. But look how powerful it is. It brings kings and queens down to believe in it. Conquerors, generals, kings and queens. Bring all of them down with nothing but the jawbone of an ass. Now he said, out of the eater comes meat. Letting them know that I'm going to show you that in this religion that you're eating is more than milk. The cow from which you get the milk has meat. And I'm going to make you the cow society. That wasn't the first time. Early in the history of these same people, didn't they worship the cow? It is called a golden cow. So they erected, had Aaron build for them the golden calf. That was before this introduction. So it was just to repeat the repeating, repeat, repeating of an old trick that had been used before that came out of Egypt. Now, you go on, it says, out of the strong come forth sweetness. This jawbone that I'm going to give you, this stupid doctrine, that I'm going to put into your hands as a knowledge as a new Samson is going to make you strong. But ain't no strength going to come out of you. Sweetness going to come out of you. I'm going to make you Western people the sugar diabetes people. I'm going to make you the sweetest people on earth. You're going to be strong for my cause and sweet to my taste. And the Western people, the Western powers, became strong for the hidden conspirators' aim and objective. But as a mighty nation, their strength is not in knowledge. Their strength is in their sweetness. We love everybody. We must defend human causes. We must fight for human dignity wherever it is threatened on this earth. Whether it be the communists that threaten it or the Muslims that threaten it, no matter who threatened it, we, the American people, our role is to come to the rescue. Johnny on the spot. Red Cross. White Cross, Peace Corps, wars fought to defend the dignity of strangers thousands of miles across the water from the homeland. Is that right? Yes. They even made you and me slaves in the name of human dignity. They didn't say they were reducing the African by putting him in chain. They said by putting him in chain, we are introducing him to Christianity, to Christ. We are going to make a Christian out of him. Sweet people. But look at the kind of sweetness they got. They used to be alive. Used to be a lie. See, first, Samson destroys the lie. He breaks his jaw. After he breaks his jaw, then he began to introduce this bargain to the people that he had already defeated. What does it mean when it says he broke his jaw, broke the lion's jaw, defeated the lion? It means that he conquered the knowledge of the European greatness. That
their greatness was like the greatness of a lion. The strength of the lion is in his jaw and in his roar. He has a mighty roar. He uses his roar as an as a battle tactic. Like the lion that digs a hole with his paw, a deep hole, and then put his head down to the hole, mouth to the hole. And he rolls in the hole. And it makes a great, like a horn. The sound comes back out of the hole like a horn. And it echoes, it rolls. Make the lion sound like he's the, the size of the moon or the size of the heaven. The big old elephant hear him roll and start running. Because he, well, he wonders what in the heck is, what kind of creature can make this kind of roll? And if you study the history, I know you're tired, but this is good for you. If you study the history of the European warriors, they use the, 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 the strategy of fear. They try to provoke fear in you to, to, to weaken you so they could defeat you. The Roman army, they would beat with the sound of their march. And when they come at their enemy, the enemy could hear in the distance, they're coming. And they were, they were, they were fighting even before they saw the soldiers. So the conspirators from the so-called Jewish people, they studied the Gentiles, and they found that they were more mouth than muscle. They found that they were people like uh, savage, savage people, that they showed the teeth. <laughs> But really, if you just use human psychology and just take it easy and say, oh, little doggy, I'm not going to hurt you. Here, here, here is two dog biscuits for you. Uh, his teeth and lips start coming down. The growl start, grow, start, start uh, reducing. Uh, uh, Pretty soon you're patting him on the head. After a while, you're walking him down the street on a harness and leash. And they call the Gentile world the dog. The dog. There ain't nothing to him but his bark. I'm telling you. Now, let's go on. <clears throat> Out of the strong come forth sweetness. They saw that this Gentile people, if given a strong, powerful, subtle uh, doctrine or ideology, that they could become a great, strong people, because they had the warlike nature, the warlike nature. And they were people who were, by habit, uh, given to threat, to make threats, to strap terror into people. So they picked them because of many other attributes too they had. We don't have time to go through all these attributes that attracted these conspirators to the Gentile world main thing that attracted them was that the Gentiles had already taken over their land and government. Jerusalem was defeated by a Gentile. So here was their way of fighting the Gentiles. They didn't have armies to fight the Gentiles. They were too few. Their only weapon was trick, psychology. 
psychology, schemes, tricks. So they use that to usurp the powers of the Gentile people and got into power. So they were really seeking a place. In fact, Jerusalem never was established by the conspirators. It was established by good people too. But the conspirators never established Jerusalem to serve as any geographic uh, line for them. Never to serve as a physical geography marking where they are supposed to be. And I can show you in scripture that what I'm saying, if you had time. But this is not all, this is not in this talk, and I'm going off in the talk now. They always plan to take over the whole world. Their plan from the very beginning was to take over the whole world. Jerusalem was just a little place there uh, serving a purpose in this whole strategy. And Muslims that support that idea of them having any legal right, religion giving them a right to land, are not Muslim. Why? Because Allah says to us, the earth belongs to God. The earth is God. The earth belongs to Allah. And he may inherit it whomsoever he pleases. And he says that only my righteous servants shall inherit it. So it's not, it's not given to people because of any special favor to their race or to their ancestors. God gives it because you earned it in your morals. You earned it in being obedient to his will, to his teaching. Those who follow religion best are the ones best qualified to exert some kind of authority to own a land, to possess a land. And you're never supposed to take people out of a land who have already been settled in a land. Those who are settled in the land have the right to the land because they have been developing the land, they have been working the land, they have invested in the land, they have the right to the land. There's no justification ever to take people up out of their land. God never told Prophet Muhammad to take people out of their land. He said, carry them the light of truth not to take them up out of their land. Let's go on now. Samson's own strength was in his hair. His strength was in his hair. And hair, again, is symbolic of knowledge. What kind of knowledge? Religious knowledge. The hair of a human being comes one color and with age it becomes white. It's symbolic of religious knowledge. Rel religious knowledge uh, comes to us to form in us light of understanding and moral excellence which is symbolic of white, light and moral excellence, you see. But it shouldn't turn white in the, in the end, should it? This kind of knowledge should come to you first, like this. But the hair is used to show <coughs> that this is not the divine revealed knowledge. This is a human way of coming into moral development. The human being comes into the world and he gets his good advice from his mother. But if he's lucky, it's with age that he matures spiritually and morally and become a truly spiritual and moral person. So white hair comes with age, doesn't it? White hair comes with age. And it's generally those people who have grown old that really become serious about God, about spiritual devotion, and about moral excellence. The young follow it because they fear the wrath of the law. They fear to disobey what, the, what the society or what their immediate uh, society has established for them. But the old accept it because they love it. 
I'm talking about the true ones. When they become with age, they learn that this, this fast life is not all to it. They learn that they're higher value. And they take on the whiteness of spiritual knowledge and, and high morals. Is that right? But does that, does God want us to wait till we get old to do that? God want us to do that early. So this hair symbolism is really a Jacobite symbol symbolism. Yes. Moses' beard is what got him in trouble. When he had led the people astray, uh, pardon me, Aaron's beard, when he had led the people astray, Moses came down in anger and he seized them by the hair of his head. Is that right? Which meant that it was his hair that got him in trouble. Well, there's a lot to it. Okay, I don't have time to go over all of it. Let's keep trying to move on with it. <clears throat> Seven locks, L-O-C-K-S. You need a key to open a lock. His strength was in this, that his knowledge was locked up. Seven locks of hair. His knowledge wasn't exposed to other people. And the moment he exposed it to the to Delilah, whom he trusted, he lost his strength. Is that right? Yes. All right, let's continue now. <clears throat> Seven locks. Yes. So the locks we understand is a secret knowledge. Secret knowledge that runs a course. It's a knowledge that runs the course, it is to be repeated. Because once it runs the course, it can't be, can't keep going. You have to start it back over again. You start with do. Re, mi, fa, do, la, ti. When you get to ti, that's the cross. Now you can't keep going with the cross. You have to bring in do again, so you bring in communism or something else, and you start the world all over again. Do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti. And you bring them to, to, to worship the Jacobite again. And when they catch, when they call him, when you catch up with him, can't keep the tea going, got to stop the worship of the Jacobite. But start off, start the world all over again with a new knowledge. Do, re, and all the way up to tea again. So you keep going. From one knowledge that is invented by the Jacobite conspirators that leads you to the worship of the Jacobite. Once you catch on to them that you're worshiping them, they create another knowledge that brings you right to the same place again. So this is the seven locks of Samson that was his strength. But he fell in love so much with the liar. Delilah is sin and darkness. <laughs> Samson got weak. He fell in love with the, with the hell he had created for the Gentiles. <laughs> Delilah wasn't meant for him to fall in love with. He wasn't supposed to love Delilah. He was supposed to marry a different girl. But he ended up falling in love with Delilah that he didn't really want. He didn't want Delilah. But Delilah kept putting put herself in his way. Why? Because he was raising a whole lot of hell in the world, and hell got so thick in the world that even Samson couldn't escape it. <laughs> so sin and corruption came even against Samson. And the Jewish boy started getting in the field, and the Jewish girl started going astray. And pretty soon the Jewish community gets in disorder. <laughs> oh, yeah in love with the corruption that they created for other people. So what they got to do now? Well, too late. Darkness takes off the lock. Once, once the Jewish conspirators get weak for the sins of the, of the wicked environment that they themselves formed, then they began to let out secrets to the people in the sinful environment. They become
become drunk with the corruption that they create. And they lose mental, uh, what, uh, fortitude, uh, composure. They lose the composure. They lose the ability to hold in what they shouldn't let out. And they begin to let out, not by word all the time, by their actions, by their mannerisms. The, the, the dark society begin to peek their whole card. Oh, I see something. Yes, you get too intimate. Somebody's going to see something. You see? So uh, uh, the people see. When the people see, then they expose the Jacobite scheme. When the Jacobite scheme is supposed exposed, they have no strength. They become like ordinary people, have no supernatural strength anymore. And their knowledge then is just on a level with our knowledge. So they are in the dark with us. They see no more than we see. So he become blind. Samson became blind. He had no superior eyesight. It was no more than the blindness of the society because they had got his special knowledge. You understand? All right. He's blind now. And the world began to use him. Not because they forced it on him. He, it looked like Samson was forced to do this. That, that's all strict. No. He has no other recourse. He has no other way. No other alternative. They know my secret now. My secret wisdom is of no power to me. Now what I'll do is show them that I'm stronger than I am. I can grind more corn than there are. I'm going to get at the wheels of their economy. I'm going to get at the wheels of their uh, academic, the academic uh, knowledge schools of thought. And I'm going to show them that I can produce more fine flour of academic knowledge. I can produce more fine flour of enlightenment. I will show them that I can produce what they want. And they won't kill me. They keep me as their workhorse, their ox, to grind the fine flour for. So he goes from one conspiracy to another one. He goes underground like the mafia and the Ku Klux Klan sometimes. And you say, oh, I don't see him anymore. They must be gone. He ain't gone. He's just grinding flour. He's going to make bread all over again. <laughs> and when he make his bread, he will start again with dough. And he'll go to Ray Me Faso La Tee. So he can't see any more than you. But he knows how to grind the flour. And he has the strength of the heart. So he grinds the flower of knowledge and he works with you in your blind world, in the darkness right with you. But in time, he rises to the superior position. He has made him some flower that is special. Oh yeah. And he's going to make him some dough that is special. And pretty soon he's going to have all the bread. And when he gets the bread, he's going to have the power. And then he'll bring in Ray. And then after he bring in Ray, it'll come, the world will come back to him. He will have me again. And he'll bring it on back up to Fossil Lodge here. When he gets the tea, he'll have the world worshiping the Jacobite again. And this thing continues over and over again. An endless circle. This is the true knowledge of the secret Jacobite conspiracy. Not from the protocols of Zion. This is straight from the horse's mouth. And you'll find four horses in the Bible. Now, 
Let's continue here. What is the role symbolic of? Do you recall? Symbolic of the way you use the knowledge. The dress. Symbolic of the way you use the knowledge. The sheet is the knowledge. The pages, the script. Remember now, when Jesus was crucified, he lost his robe. And they gambled to see who would possess his robe. Now, if you understand the meaning of robe, then you can understand that this world doesn't have the true knowledge, the true use of the knowledge that Jesus gave them. The knowledge was just was lost from Jesus' body. And it fell in the hands a crooked sinner who gambled for it. Not only that, the silver cup, the special cup, it was lost too. Which tells us not only the proper use of the knowledge was lost, but also the moral cleanliness was lost from the religion. Silver chalice, I think they call it. Is that what they call it? I think it is called silver chalice. It was lost from Christianity. So how do we explain this? Ask the, 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 the preacher next Sunday morning at 11 o'clock. Ask him, say, preacher, please tell me what does it mean in Christianity when it, that it says that they lost the silver chalice, the silver cup. Ask the preacher, how can they have the, the, the crowd of Jesus in this city, what is it called? Turin, in Turin. When the Bible says that his robe fell into the hands of sinners and they gambled to see who would possess it. So how can they have his robe there? If they have it, sinners gave it to them. And if the sinners gave it up, it wasn't fit to wear. That's right. That robe wasn't fit to wear. After it fell into the hands of sinners, who want to wear it? Let's continue now. It says, He gave them another riddle. And this riddle is, What is sweeter than honey? And what is stronger than a lion? So he gave two riddles. In fact, four parts to it. Second one is, What is sweeter than honey? What is stronger than a lion? All right? We know honey means the beauty of pure scripture. How do we know this? We know it because in the Quran this word is used. Honey is a good word for scripture. And the honey is the essence of the flowers. And flowers are symbolic of beautiful culture. What is sweeter than the beauty that God offers you? What is sweeter than the sweetness that you find in God's pure scripture? That's what he's telling us. And what is stronger than a lion? What he's telling them that the East have honey. They have the beauty of God's revelation. And you have plants of a liar. I've got something to make you stronger. And I've got something to give you to make your doctrine sweeter than their honey. You see this thing? Yes, it's plain. So he gave them the, the Gentile world, the doctrine of love, the love of Christ, that was sweeter than the moral and spiritual teachings to weak people, than the pure teachings of, of the prophets. It's sweeter to them that God loved you sinners so much that he gave his only begotten son, that he should be gone, mocked, fed on, tortured, crucified, and die and be buried for your sins. Oh, that's sweet to 
ignorant, weak people. Sweeter than the truth of God's scripture. So he said, what is sweeter than honey? This lie I'm going to give you is sweeter than the pure honey of scripture that the East has. And what is stronger than a liar? This subtle psychology in this lie that captures the heart and sentiment of the strong, the wild and ferocious, is more powerful than your fear tactics and your marching and your uh, <laughs> armor and sword. Telling the European, I'm going to make you more powerful with this subtle doctrine than you ever could be with your physical might and your fear tactics. Now let us see we go on with this and get some more understanding. Samson finally decided that he was going to destroy the world that he himself had created, if you understand it now. He decided that he himself was going to destroy the Philistines. They had cheated him out of his heifer. <laughs> I'm talking about right now. The Christian church that he thought would be his helper betrayed him. Say, oh, you can have business, you can have a media, you can have this, but you ain't going to run our churches. The Gentile don't want no Jews over their church. If you want to have something, you can have Peter. Go and tutor the Pope in secrecy. He'll accept it. But these Ordinary Gentiles ain't going to accept that no Jew rule over them. So you mean to tell me you ain't going to give me my help, huh? Well, why don't, why don't you? Uh, can't you all do it through me? Can't you carry out my orders? No, we can't do it. They ain't going to listen to it. Well, very good. Well, then, can I tell you what kind of doctrine you should give to the Masses that won't follow Peter. Yes, it's okay. All right. I'm going to make bread again. I'm going to get on a wheel. And I'm going to make Marxism. I'm going to make communism. I'm going to make the age of reason. I'm going to exalt logic. I'll give them some new flour. Is that okay? Well, that's okay as long as you don't take over the church. No, I won't buy the church. Okay. Go on, at, go on to the wheel again, it's okay. Now oh, listen. <laughs> After all that, he still was un not satisfied. Is that right? Yeah, look at the story now. Don't remember it. He still ain't satisfied. So he said, I'm blind. But I got something that they don't know I got. I got special power in my arms. All I want to do is just have somebody throw me to the pillars of the foundation of that society. And if I just can get to the two pillars that hold up the structure of that society, I'm going to bring it down on me and them. So Samson goes and stands between the two pillars with the help of a little boy. He couldn't see, but he used the help of a little boy. What is the help of that little boy? Psychology. Psychology. Don't think it's another person. He's not even a person. Person's carried out, but he's a knowledge about it. Then he goes and he used use a little boy, psychology. Don't 
human beings use psychology before they use intelligence? That's why psychology in this particular context is called a little boy. Your little children, before they are able to compete with you on an intelligent plane, they're already using psychology on you. So psychology is an early development in the human being. That's why the Jacobite cousin, Farid Muhammad, said, Farad Mah said that Yaku conceived his idea at the age six as a little boy of psychology. You'll be surprised to know that I know that. I hope he gets it. I understand that. I understand that he's back home now, so he'll get this message, inshallah. Now, let me continue. With the help of psychology, he finds his way to the foundation of the new society. And when he gets to the foundation, what does he do? He forms a cross of himself. And he began pressing with all his might. That's what the scripture says. Say he pressed with all his might, with all his strength, on the pillars, forming him, of himself a cross. What does this mean? This is more than Trinitarianism. This is the psychology of the mentality that Trinitarianism has produced. He has now learned that there are certain weaknesses in the mentality that Trinitarianism has produced. And he knows that he can appeal to their emotions. And he can push in two directions at the same time. He didn't pull the pillow, he pushed. He can push in opposite directions at the same time. Make one people give into emotion and the other people give into logic. Push them so that some will become highly emotional and some will become highly logical. And in doing this, the logic and the, and, uh, will, will, will act against the emotion and the emotion will act against the logic. The emotional makeup will kill the logic and the logic will offend the emotion. And the society will be divided against itself, and the pillars will fall. Don't you know that's the strategy that's used on this society? Whenever this society, the, 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 the hidden evil in the structure, uh, is about to be exposed, they begin firing the society with uh, emotion, sentiment, love, children, love for everybody. Crazy kind of, 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 of sentimentality and emotionalism. They fired up and kill a strong emotion. This is the pressure. Now, when he does it, it's going to drop the whole thing. If you can be successful in bringing the sentimental and emotional elements against the logic, it's going to destroy the whole thing. But look, he will certainly, he will be, he will be killed as a knowledge body. He was already blind, wasn't he? What the hell have he lost? Nothing. Once he bring it down, he will start up all over again. So, raise me, fossil lot Just in the few years that have passed that few people, that team has tried to restore America. But by the grace of God, you me, America was not destroyed. Why do I say to me? Because I was the only one that came out when the when the king was to go in the form of the cross. When the great king was to become emotional, highly emotional, and give one side to dry logic. I came up in the middle of that action and said there's a scene going on. There's a trick going on. This whole thing is designed to fire up your sentiments and your emotions and topple the society. And somebody must have heard me and believed others who had been talking before I started and all of it came together to save America. Yes. See, they didn't believe others.
as we were saying, there's a scheme. There's a hidden scheme. But when I began to speak, they say, look, now we know this boy. We've been watching this boy since his father raised him up. We know that this boy ain't no tool of no outside influence. So if he says these things that ring a bell, where did he get it from? We believe maybe God is inspiring Wallace C. Muhammad. So they went back to the death and they began to pull out things from the old files. And they studied history all over again. And they said that Wallace C. Muhammad is an inspired man. He sees something. And if, if what he's saying is what we've heard before, it might be something to it. How, how else did he get it? They all know, let's check this thing. Let's check this thing. So, uh, 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 I'm sorry. You can't get uh, the sixpence today. <laughs> Only one. Sorry, we ain't buying pies today. We buy cake. <laughs> you heard that old story of uh, Simple Simon? Met a pieman on the way to the square. I think it goes simple, said simple Simon to the pieman, would you have a sixpence to spare? And I think he said if I had a, if I was selling sixpence, I wouldn't be selling pies. Well, that's another one of the conspirators' riddles. And I'll tell you what it means. Six tenths means the knowledge behind the scheme. See, the man was made on the sixth day. The six tenths is the knowledge behind the scheme. Simon was given seven. Not six. He couldn't see six. Six was ruling seven. But he wanted the six. What is the secret in this? Will you tell me, please, Mr. Pie Man? You know what pie is? Three decimal one four one six, I think it is. It's a formula for finding the circumference of the earth. It's a formula for world dominance. Now, I'm not saying anything that I didn't want to say. I know it's a formula for finding the circumference of a circle. It's a formula for world dominance. And Peter, the Catholic Church, wanted it. But the conspirator wouldn't give it to us. Say, if I was selling my own secret, you think I'd be selling pies? You think I'd be telling you how to get the world? <laughs> If I was selling the secret to how to get it, I'll just tell you how to get it. I ain't gonna tell you my secret. You get it for me. <laughs> yes, all Peter got was some magic beans. He did manage to get those, didn't he? You remember that riddle? Nursery rhyme, whatever you want to call it. Jack at the Bean Store. Yeah. He had Jack, which is nothing again but Peter, all of Western society. Pardon me, I shouldn't say Peter, not Peter. Jack is not the Catholic Church. It's the Western society. Protestant society. Catholic Church headquarters in Rome. This is typical American. Jack is talking about typical American. That's why we call each other Jack. You know, hey Jack, what's happening, Jack? Yeah. So <laughs> it was it was it was Peter, the Pope, who asked him for his six cents. But uh, Jack, the American Christian Society, they asked for magic beans. Well, really, they didn't, they didn't know what they asked for. All they want, wanted was really to be rescued because their cow had got so lean it was about to die. Everything was going bad. 
and they want to know how to bring back life. How can my cow get fat again? How can the society thrive again? So while they were wondering, this funny looking thing jumped out in the road and it made himself visible. And he said, Maggie Jean, one back from Maggie Jean, one back from Maggie And Jack agreed to give his power up for the Maggie Jean. I'm showing you that this is not only in scripture. If it's only in scripture, that means that what I'm talking about may not be existent in the world today. Or uh, maybe it was just a story that was only in scripture. Maybe it was just fiction. But if it's in the world too, we could listen. Now, <laughs> says this little funny thing, some man jumped out and he talked Jack into giving up his child for these magazines. Right? Some of you remember it. He went away with his cow. What do the magic beans represent? A way to, again, to the secret knowledge in Christian religion. A way to the secret knowledge in Christian religion. And dumb Protestant society gave up their lean cow for this heavenly knowledge. What is the lean cow? The lean cow represents what they had before. What did they have before? They had rational uh, growth. The Protestant movement began with an interest in rational growth. Is that right? Yes. They wanted to to, to pursue knowledge. The Catholic Church had had suppressed enlightenment, had suppressed education. The people weren't allowed to learn. The masses couldn't learn and educate themselves. So a thirst for knowledge came with Martin Luther, right? And they began to want knowledge, to develop their minds. Here comes Jake, or Jack, pardon me, feeling himself desperately in need of help. We have the interest in rational, in rational development and the rational development of our society, but our knowledge is weak, our cow is lean, we haven't yet produced anything. We need help. Who will help us? Oh, Lord Jesus, help us. We got this logic, but Rome is powerful. We got this logic, and Rome is powerful. God, help us, please. Soon, Jacobite conspirator, I will help you. Would you like to have some magic beans? And if I give you my magazines, you have to give me your lean cow. In effect, he was saying the same thing that Samson said. I'm going to give you a new one, but you're going to have to give me the one you got now. And if you give him the one you got now, when it becomes fat, who it belongs to? Belong to him. He got it. He got it in exchange for the magic beam. So he went home and planted, went home, and he didn't know the value of them, right? But I think accidentally one fell into the ground, right? And the thing grew up. And it went up, up, up. And he saw it growing up past his window. He ran out and jumped on it. And the thing took him up into heaven. Took him up on the plane of clouds into a castle that, is, that was in the cloud, right? Yeah. And uh, there he found uh, a nice old woman that befriended him. But over that heavenly kingdom was a mean old giant. Is that right? Yeah. He said, he's far, full, home. I 
smell the blood of an English monarchy. Be he live or be he dead, I'll grind his bones with my bread. With my bread. Remember, bread of two kinds, leaven and unleaven. I'll grind his bones with my bread. So he managed to escape with the help of this woman up there, old woman who was nice. He managed to escape. Who is the old woman who is nice? Meaning, uh, people in the religious knowledge of the secrets of religion that were corrupt, didn't have no evil desires on the world, like the conspirators. They shared with him after he got up there, they shared with him some knowledge, helped him to get the golden knowledge down from heaven. The golden knowledge that came from the hen, right? The hen who laid golden eggs. But the hen couldn't lay no golden eggs without a music playing. <laughs> when music played, the hen would lay the eggs. The music stopped, the hen stopped laying the golden eggs. Which means that the wisdom is tied to music. Do re mi fa so la si do. Do re mi fa so la si do. But when he got the, the musical key, plus the knowledge, and he tied them together, then he had wisdom. He had wisdom. He came back down with the hen and the music harp, right? According to the story. From heaven, he brought back with him, they don't say heaven, but it is the heaven of religious symbolism, biblical symbolism. He came back down with the music maker and with the egg layer. He needed both in order to get the wisdom. The golden egg means wisdom. All right. The giant fell from heaven. Is that right? He was so big and heavy that when he fell, he knocked a big hole in the earth. Left there, a big hole in the earth. The giant was finished. Who was finished? Who was the big giant that was finished? The people in the secret religion. The Pope. The Pope. And certain others that I don't get a name right now. That hold the secrets of religion. When the Protestants were given the secret way to get it, and when Protestant leadership got it, got their share of it. Don't think they got all. They got their share. Catholic got his share share. Uh, Protestants got their share. The conspirators got the whole share. When they got it, the uh, position of superiority of them over American Christian leadership fell. And when it fell, it knocked a big hole in the ground. What is that symbolic of? Actually, they were not spiritual people. They were material people. And when they fell, a big part of the material that they had before was taken out. So much of the material wealth that was under Catholic Catholicism and under other secret conspirators in religion fell to the jack, fell to jack. To the American Christian society. Is that right? Yes. And then they began to rise. But they only had magic beans. Magic beans is not knowledge. Magic. The only way you can get it is through magic. You have to have the knowledge of the magic, know how to work them. And they were secret. So only a few of the Jack people can have them. Let me quickly tell you what Jack represents in the American Christian Society. It represents the intelligent leadership. The intelligent leadership. Jack represents the intelligent leadership. Now, Jack is not as long as Jacob. So their knowledge is shorter than Jacob. You see? Jack is a derivative 
of the word Jesus. Jacob uh, is, a, is the origin. Jack is a derivative. We derive from Jacob. So Jack is just a short. Short. They don't have Jacob. That's long. <laughs> but they do have enough to enable them to keep this same rhythm going. Rotating events with a seven-note scale, or is it eight? Yeah, eight-note scale that goes to seven and comes back to where it started, right? Do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, si, do. Comes back to where it started. So they were given knowledge of how to keep society going through these changes, psychological changes. So America, unknowingly, have been going through these changes. Look at the trend, one fad behind another. Pretty soon you're wearing what you wore 20 years ago, right? Pretty soon you're dancing the way you danced 20 years ago. You're talking the way you talked 20 years ago. You're thinking the way you thought 20 years ago. So they keep rotating. They have the Jacobite scheme, but they have only that pie that Jacobite wanted them to have. Jacobite sell pies all over the world. So the, the, the Pope a pie, so the uh, Protestant America a pie, so communist the East a, a pie, call it the red pie. Yes, the red pie. I'm getting ready to let you go now. What does the red represent? What do they mean red? You say passion? That's the trick you. Yes, red means passion in the, 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 the other octane. It's been paid already. It's another octane. It takes on another color. It takes on another dress. Don't keep the same dress. You say, I will sell you changes. You see? Yes, it meant passions in one place, but not passions in communist Russia. Although passions are involved, it means the social life. Red means the social life. What ties me together with my brother? Blood. Blood is red. See, so people as a social group are tied together first by blood. And they call each other brother. You see? So that's blood. Red stands for blood. What blood? Human blood. Human blood, and according to the Bible, uh, New Testament in particular, should combine with water, which is human spirit, symbolic of human spirit. So people should be spiritual as well as social, according to the New Testament people. You shouldn't just see blood. So Jesus said, I come not of water only, but of blood also. What does this mean? It means that before him, the people were all spiritual, but were just neglecting the social development of society. The development of the relationship of person to person, people to people, of our communities to communities. He came to bring the blood, means to bring the social life up to, with the spiritual life. This is this is in the scripture. So now if the if the east has become red. It means that they now have gone to a note. See, the world was spiritual. And then it became religious. And, and, and now they're trying to get it to become all red. No spirituality. Take the spirituality all out of it. Make it all red. That we are a social group. That we are a social group and we are born out of materialism. So material concepts should govern us. We shouldn't have spiritualism in our life. Give up, give out the water. Only the red. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. He saved us from change. He saved us 